Uh, here we are arriving at the Cape for launch. Uh, we typically fly down in T-38s, and there we are uh, just kind of taxiing it in formation. Um, this is the, uh, our vehicle out on the pad at night, uh, right after we first get there. Uh, so we'll pull up in our airplanes and um, talk to the press a little bit and uh, then get ready for a couple days prior to launch and kind of get settled in. Here we are on launch day, uh, getting into our suits. We get in our suit, do a pressure check. They said they couldn't find any, any videos of me smiling. That's because I didn't smile until we finished the mission. Uh, Charlie, on the other hand, is happy to be on his first flight. He's getting uh, ready here, getting his suit all checked out, ready to go. Um, Mike Gernhardt, um, who was, uh, this is actually a shot from a uh, NBL run, but here he is getting strapped in. Uh, and we're all in a suit room right there at Kennedy Space Center. Uh, Janet, during some training to fly the robotic arm and she'll be getting suited up. She's ready to go on her third flight. She's a veteran, she has no worries at all. Uh, she didn't know me that well then. <coughs> and uh, finally, uh, Jim Riley here, here he's getting into a, an EVA suit to practice a water run. And uh, Jim getting suited up. Um, a few months before the flight, they made him an honorary U.S. Marshal. Barney Five. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, I guess I don't need to say anything else. Uh, here we are on walkout. Uh, same criteria as before, as I mentioned. Key is not to fall down. Keep a tight formation. Don't put your hand in the other person's face. Um, go out to the uh, vehicle, and we go out there about two and a half hours prior to launch and get strapped in. Um, I'm the first one to go in, uh, get my uh, harness on and parachute, um, crawl in. Vehicle's in a vertical, so uh, the, the uh, back wall is actually the floor. Uh, to get in uh, my seat, I have to do a pull-up and get into my seat. They pu push me down my parachute, get me strapped in. Here's a neat shot from the mid-deck. This is Jim getting into his seat. He's actually using the back wall uh, to step on and to get into his seat. And notice he's riding all by himself down there. Um, into the right seat is uh, Charlie. Uh, same process as I used to get into his seat, getting strapped in. Mike's uh, already in right here. And then finally, Janet's the last one in. Uh, and she's in the vehicle about two hours prior to launch. Uh, once she gets in, they'll close the hatch, do some leak checks, uh, move everybody uh, well away from the launch pad, two or three miles away and then we're getting ready to launch. Now let's let you listen to the sound. Here's what it looks like from the inside. Uh, the first couple of minutes, pretty, uh, pretty rough ride on these solid rocket boosters. About two minutes into the flight, we get up to about 4,000 miles an hour, and the solid rockets are going to come off here. And there they are separating. And pretty big flash in the window when that happens. And there they are separating off the vehicle. Um, and the vehicle goes away. Neat shot here coming up of uh, what the SRB looks like from the ground. You can see as it tumbling back to Earth. Uh, and then it's about another six and a half minutes, a very smooth ride up into space. Once we hit space, the last thing we do is uh, we drop off the external tank, and it'll uh, re-enter the atmosphere over the Pacific Ocean and burn up. As we get up on orbit, there's a lot of work that needs to be done. We start off right with a payload bay, or, uh, payload bay door opening to get some cooling going, and then uh, deploying the KU antenna shown here, which uh, gives us some calm and video. And then it's also configuring the flight deck. We need to get rid of all our ascent stuff, pull out our, all our orbit books, and get prepared for docking the next day. Here's Mike also getting ready for an EVA. He's got his drink bag. And part of what comes out besides the water is a little bit of hydrogen or air, and that needs to be liberated. Here, uh, coming up on the rendezvous, was a, a shot from the station. And then how the actual profile looks relative to the station. We approach from underneath, transition out in front, and approach right down the line of sight, and then we dock to the mating adapter, which is attached to the lab. Here's how we're set up on the flight deck with Steve and Jim in the back, and also Janet, she's running the, uh, the docking mechanism. And here's what we look like to station as we're coming up on along their line of sight, and what station looked like to us out the back window. Here's our payload bay with, uh, the, again, the gas tanks and the airlock that you've already heard about. And Steve, the excitement gets a little closer. Janet's getting ready to run the mechanism and uh, 
Jim shooting the handheld laser. Now, if we saw this happen in this kind of time, we'd all be screaming at Steve. This is uh, <laughs> like twice, twice real time, but this is a, a, a perfect doc. And then the obligatory high fives for a job well done. This is a really good job on the docking. The next thing after uh, mating is uh, getting some leak checks between the two modules. We get to stare at each other through this two inch window, which is pretty exciting. And, uh, you know, it's kind of like, let me in, let me in. And this is an awkward situation here. It's like, how do you hug a guy when you're upside down and the other guy's right side up and you don't know which one's which? <laughs> Uh, that's uh, Steve and Yuri exchanging uh, congratulations. And again, none of us had been in station before. This is Steve coming into the station for the first time. It's got that new car smell to it. It's a little different. One of the real challenges we had for the first EVA is that uh, we had an integrated operation with the station crew and us, and we hadn't trained with them for four months. And this just shows the uh, pre-fright briefing that we did. We spent about an hour going through all of the different dependencies of the two robot arms. Here's Susan actually operating the station robot arm while Janet and Steve were back on the shuttle operating the shuttle arm. And again, this was the first use of the station arm and with its uh, uh, sort of r slow start with respect to some of the computer problems, we were prepared for any number of different contingencies uh, that could go wrong. And Jim and I were down in the payload bay preparing the airlock for uh, unberthing. And this is a shot of Jim installing his foot restraint. Jim was working on the arm, and I'm down here, you see in the lower part of the screen, uh, releasing a cable. And this is just a graphic depiction of taking the airlock up there. And uh, Jim and I had really tight choreography. As I mentioned before, we were a race against time for the water lines freezing up or our suits running out of uh, consumables. And the choreography worked out so well that actually, uh, when I released this cable and went to hand it up to Jim, he was actually coming by on the arm and I handed it off to him on the fly and so we actually had our times down within you know literally seconds of uh, what we had hoped for and then this is Susan getting ready to mate the airlock to the CBMs uh, Jim and I went up there and were in position to give her guidance commands if she needed them and then once the airlock was attached uh, Jim and I got busy with hooking up the heater cables and then preparing uh, some of the fixtures for the next EVA and this is us coming back at the end of EVA-1. As with all other modules on the space station, ours uh, was given a name, and here it's being uh, christened as the Quest module. Uh, we are not responsible for that name. Headquarters is, so <laughs> you'll have to ask them. <laughs> um, this is again showing the um, vestibule outfitting where we're taking some of these lines and connecting the airlock to the uh, space station itself. Uh, you see Jim Boss there helping us out, and Yuri, as I said before, we're operating as, as one team there. Uh, a lot of the stuff going on inside, but here we have a very nice picture of Italy there in the background. You can see the boot there at the bottom. Now we're getting prepared for EVA-2, and as we've been mentioning all along, it was a, quite a choreograph between the, the two arms moving at the same time. We have one stowed over there, the, the shuttle arm, as you see, while the the space station arm is, is getting ready to hand off the tank to the space station or to the EVA guys, but in reality we had both arms moving at the same time. And you see the shuttle arm over there on the left side. The station arm is now coming in for the grapple to the for the first tank, and uh, now both arms are moving. Mike is on the shuttle arm over there coming up, while Susan is moving the first gas tank up to position. Mike is now there near the top, uh, getting ready to jump off, climb on over to the node, and then on over to the airlock where he and Jim will accept this tank. And as you saw earlier in the slides, uh, here's another shot of Mike and I taking the handoff from the arm, and here's the arm actually pulling away, and, and right at this moment we've got the tank in our hands ourselves, and we're the only ones holding on to it, and we're bringing it down onto the latches. This is also like the docking. We would have been screaming at each other if it had gone that fast, but we'd sped it up a little bit. Once we got it attached and uh, locked down, then Mike opened up the valve that, that flowed the gas to the station, so it was the nitrogen and oxygen was now available. While he was doing that, I went off to get the next uh, site for the next tank ready uh, for the next uh, delivery. And as you can see, here we've got uh, in EVA-2, we had the opportunity to get two tanks on, which was a nominal plan, and we had enough time to get a third one on, which gave us a uh, little, little extra time on EVA-3. And then as we finished up the day, this is a, a nice view looking up into the, the terminator uh, of, the, uh, of, the, of, the, uh, of the Earth. 
And once we got uh, on orbit, it's time to outfit the airlock. And here's uh, the crew opening up. And as you can see, there's a lot of stuff in the crew lock right now. We still had a lot of outfitting to do. Mike's in the crew lock. We've got the crew lock bags with all of our tools in it. And then it was time to get ready for EVA-3. And Scorch here, is, uh, as we mentioned earlier, was our choreographer in all of this. He was suiting us up, making sure we had all of our tools, making sure all of our systems were ready, making sure we were ready. Uh, turning on all of our equipment on the suit as we were getting ready to go out the door. And then as he uh, stuffed us into the crew lock, he uh, shook our hands. Uh, there I am with my head toward the equipment lock, and Mike's got his head <laughs> up to the other, other side. And uh, we almost took Scorch with us, but <laughs> he's a little bigger than both of us. So he closed the door, shut the garage door on us here. Uh, we depressed the uh, airlock and then uh, started the EVA-3. And as you can see, that on EVA-3, we were putting the last of the, the tanks on. Again, this is animation of the station robotic arm as it's bringing the third tank up. And Mike? Yeah, this is uh, the, a view from the elbow camera of the shuttle arm that traces the trajectory that the station arm would make with the high-pressure gas tanks. And then up in the far uh, left corner of the screen, you can see the hatch. And uh, as it turned out, we were delayed a day because of uh, outfitting issues. And uh, we ended up coming out the door on the same day that of the anniversary of the first moonwalk, uh, which we didn't even know until the Capcom made a speech uh, about that. And uh, this is a shot of me coming out of the airlock. Uh, one of the neat things about this airlock is you come out and you're facing straight down. So as you exit uh, in the shuttle, you go into a nice payload bay. And here you're dropping straight down. Looks like you're skydiving from 250 miles up in orbit. And uh, if, that, if that scares you, you can quickly switch your reference frame and look at structure. This is a shot from uh, my helmet camera, which we also called the monkey cameras. But uh, here we are looking straight down at the payload bay. This is me riding the arm down to release the gas tank. And then on the inside, uh, Susan and Yuri were busy uh, flying the SS or the station RMS. Here's a shot of Jim and I removing a thermal cover that was on the airlock to keep it warm until we got ready to get the tanks. And when the tank was about 10 minutes away, they, they gave us a call and we removed the thermal cover. And here we are taking the handoff of the tank. And then after that, we scaled the truss to go up and look at the solar rays. And here's Jim and I flying in formation. Uh, we didn't train heavily on this task, and there's a whole bunch of little things that you could really mess up up there. So we were very careful to move slow and not undo uh, the, the, first, the success of the first two spacewalks. So after nine or ten days of, of really full uh, schedules and hardly ever going to bed on time, we decided it was time to, to have a little party. We went over the SM module. It was bedtime, but it, it was well worth it to, to go ahead and have a meal together, uh, kind of a celebratory event after making sure that everything was done properly, everything worked. and. So everybody was very relaxed, and so we had a, a really nice meal on, on station with mostly the Russian food, which is just excellent. Uh, if you haven't seen the wa water bubble tricks, um, this is an astronaut's prime uh, means of enjoyment space here, entertainment. Uh, you can see the air bubble trapped inside a water bubble here. You can see Steve's face is upside down there on the out outer water bubble, but on the inside, in the air, he's right side up again. So Yuri's taking some dental floss here and removing that, that air bubble outside the water bubble. Now you see the inverted uh, pictures again of the people in the background. And uh, if you don't get out of the way of that water bubble in time and you take it right in the face, it's quite a shock. Um, anyway, this is what it looks like if you're doing a fire drill on the space station, taking a tour from the SM module through the FGB where you can see all our transfer items here waiting to be transferred back to the shuttle. Uh, skimming through this long skinny module, the, uh, the Russian uh, module is right below us. They're going right now into the node. We're going to take a quick peek to the airlock to the right and back right <laughs> through into the lab. And if you keep going straight through, you'll end up inside the shuttle. This was a sad part of the flight. You know, it almost brought a tear to my anyhow. This is the uh, final farewell to the Increment 2 and in our stay aboard station. Uh, this is a before of a before and after shot. This is uh, the two pieces together. And this shows, uh, if I would have done it right, what it was supposed to look like. <laughs> yeah, it actually went pretty well. 
Well, we fly out along a uh, line of sight, pretty much a reverse of how we came in, out to about 400 feet, and then we do this uh, circle, more like a, an egg, all the way around the station. We survey all the parts and take a look at it from all different angles until it gets really dark and scary. There's a docking target on the left, and then our, our uh, mating mechanism uh, starting to separate. You can see a little bit of ice bouncing away. Either that or they were throwing coins at us from the station as we separated. And here's the, uh, the flight deck. Like I said, this time I got to swap with Steve, and he's over on the left-hand side screaming at me the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> here we are separating out. Um, there's Jim's big head. I couldn't see anything, so I'm just trying to sneak a peek <laughs> under that big old thing. And Janet's <laughs> keeping us all straight. Here's what the station looked like to us as we're separating out again uh, through our centerline camera out of our docking mechanism. And uh, Steve getting a good look of uh, what it looks like. Uh, and then as we do the fly around, you can see this is like a rear aspect of it. And then here we start phasing into nighttime and it got just about that dark. After we completed our fly around, it's uh, time to take a couple of last looks at the planet, time to close up the payload bay doors and uh, come on home. We had two shots at, uh, at on the first day. We didn't get either one of those. But uh, we did on the second day. We hit the upper atmosphere at about 400,000 feet. And here's what you see through the overhead windows. We get the flash of the plasma. And then uh, you can see that in the back of Steve's helmet there. And then on the outside of the windows, on the other side of Steve, is the plasma that we're flying through when we're up high. Here's a thermal image of us as we're coming down. Uh, you can see just how hot the orbiter is. This is the HUD view that the pilot sees. Uh, this is the one I was looking at too. I had a, had a repeater screen that I could look at. And what you can see is we're rolling out on final approach here. You can see at the top of the screen the runway. Here's another thermal image. And you can see just how hot the nose is relative to everything else on the vehicle. We're starting to do our, our pre-flare and final flare. Uh, the gear's coming here in a second, and then we will touch down at just a little bit over uh, the speed of a 747. And you see the, uh, the aim point that Steve's heading for right there, and, and as we're coming through the lights, you can see the condensation over the wings and over the top of the cockpit. It was a perfect touchdown. We could almost uh, not feel it. It was just about perfect. Uh, Scorch deployed the chute. It uh, came out. We dropped the chute at about 60 knots. We roll out on the, on the runway after after roughly 5.3 million miles, almost 13 days uh, on orbit and 200 uh, revolutions. Well, once uh, we land and stop, our job's not done. Uh, we have to uh, reconfigure the vehicle once, one more time to turn it over to the ground team, uh, get cooling on it, and uh, reconfigure the computers. And it takes about an hour to get out of the vehicle, and, uh, and they check us out, make sure we're okay. And here we are. Uh, the last thing we get to do is... Uh, crawl out of the vehicle, uh, do a walk around, uh, take a look at the vehicle. There's the uh, Kennedy Space Center director telling me I'll never fly again. Um, <laughs> and uh, and uh, so we uh, meet and greet, especially the folks at Kennedy Space Center. We flew this vehicle for 13 days and never had a single problem with it um, and never had to worry about it and just everything worked perfectly. It was just a wonderful vehicle. They did a great job for us. And that's pretty much the end. And due to budget cuts, they had to turn out the lights on the runway right here. <laughs> And that's, uh, that's all we have. <laughs>